it's been a while since my last makeup video and since it's pride month i really wanted to do um something for that because i am bisexual and i actually really like the bisexual flag so i wanted to um incorporate those colors into my makeup and so that is what we are doing today i'm going to be showing you my process and i'm kind of just winging it because um i didn't plan this very well at all but i'm going to just try to create something kind of cool and i really just wanted to try doing like a more sit down like chill makeup sort of video where i can actually like not only talk through my process but also like talk about things related to it because for this kind of video I think it's really important to be uh, really real and talk about um, real issues going on. So yeah, let's get started, I guess. I can already tell like looking at the screen, this video might be a little bit grainy. There is not enough light in here and I don't have enough lights to compensate for that. Um, which is weird because it's the middle of the day and normally I don't have an issue. All right, now that my forehead looks super huge, uh, let's get right into the process. So I always start out with a sunscreen, no matter what. I just feel like um, having that extra moisture really helps the foundation um, really stick and feel good. So I never skip the step, even if I'm not gonna be going outside. Like today, I probably won't go outside, but I'm going to be using uh, the Soon Young Mild Defense Sun Cream. And this has been really good for my dry skin. I saw this recommended on YouTube for dry skin. Um, it's really, it's really like thick and creamy. As you can see, like you only need a little bit and this will basically go all over my whole face. It does have a bit of a white cast. Um, but I'm super, super pale, so it's like, that doesn't matter that much to me. But this is just, it's like one of the better sunscreens I've tried in a long time, which is really nice. It's really moisturizing, and when I use it under my foundation, it just makes everything look super dewy all day. All right, so I am going to be going in with the Fenty Beauty Foundation. This is shade 100. It's the Soft Matte Pro Filter Foundation, and you probably have heard me complain about this other times on my channel. I know I've used it in at least one of my other makeup videos before, I don't quite remember, but this foundation is extremely over drying, and because I have dry skin, um, it just doesn't work. So if you have oily skin, I can highly recommend this foundation, but if you don't, um, I would recommend getting the hydrating formula. I was going to get the hydrating formula a while ago. Um, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. But with the sunscreen and everything, I think that this is going to be a little bit better on my skin than it has been in the past because like using this without any hydrating primer or anything is just way too much. But at the same time, I hate wasting product, especially one that's like really expensive, like this foundation. I just hate getting it and then like throwing it away. So I'm trying to use it up in whatever way I can. Yeah, this is going on a lot nicer than the last time I used it. I bought like a cheap foundation to use for everyday wear that I just like kind of mix in with my sunscreen most days for like a little tinted moisturizer moment. But this is going on pretty well actually. Um, especially cause with that sunscreen, I don't usually need to use a primer. And so I wasn't going to cake up my face today. I've been really trying to not cake up my face too much because um, I've been really trying to improve my skin and everything. I mean, maybe this isn't the best day to say that because I have like a few very small breakouts, but if you saw my skin before, like my skin was so flaky dry. And I think I said this in, um, one of my other makeup videos about how dry my skin is, but it's just, I don't know. It, I'm seeing a lot of improvement, but like, you know, hormones and stuff, I still get little breakouts from time to time. This also sets itself, so I'm going to be being very careful with like setting powder and stuff. Okay, I'm going to be using the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Concealer. 
This is the pale shade. Um, looks like it's 01, the lightest shade. Um, and I think this is so funny because it's, I think meant to be a highlighting concealer, but this is my actual shade, which in the overall scheme of things is like not a huge problem. Um, you know, it's, it's workable. I use a lot of like really glittery highlighters though for this reason, because I just like, I can't use like concealer as any sort of highlighter. So I don't know, but I don't really mind because I mean, I'm a glitter girl. I love shiny things and I love using really blinding highlighters. So I don't know, I'm not really a natural look kind of person, even though I do wear natural looks. It's just that if I'm gonna go all out, I'm gonna go all out, you know what I mean? So this is basically just where I apply my concealer. I only put it on like little blemishes and um, redness spots because I do have a lot of redness on my skin. That's one of my main skin issues is all the redness. And so I put a little bit like on my nose and I don't have a major problem with dark circles but I still put a little concealer under there anyway because I think almost everyone has like a little bit of dark circles. So because my skin is really dry and that foundation in particular is very dry, I'm using a very minimal amount of setting powder. I'm just using the Maybelline Master Fix uh, powder. This is just a plain translucent powder. Um, sometimes it gets all over everything. And this is gonna be really awkward to apply like in this setup, but I'm gonna try my best. I'm going to be using the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion to prime my eyelids for all the eyeshadow I'm gonna be putting on. Okay, so for my eyeshadow look, I'm going to be starting with uh, the pink shades. So I'm going to be using um, the Morphe Jeffree Star palette and I'm going to be starting with the shade Don't Know Her and putting that kind of on the inner half of the lid. It's kind of funny because I was actually like mildly disappointed in this palette. This one is just not as good as like the Jeffree Star Cosmetics shadows, but I mean, it's fine because I bought it on sale. So it's not a big deal, but I do think that this palette in particular and Morphe in general is a little bit overhyped um, in my personal opinion, like don't come for me, but I have not been impressed overall with Morphe's quality. Um, I mean, these brushes are really nice though. I do have to give them that. Okay, so now that I've got the base kind of down in the corner, I'm going to be doing the middle uh, purple shade. We're gonna um, dip into the blood sugar palette and I'm going to be using the shade uh, Root Canal, which is this really nice purple right here. And yeah, let's just go for that. Yeah, these don't really blend together the best, um, but that's okay, we're gonna fix it later. I forgot to do my brows before I started this eyeshadow. So we're gonna go back and do that before I ruin everything. Um, Cause I think having the brows done just really <laughs> gives some perspective into doing the eyeshadow look. Um, I like to just kind of shape my brows a little bit with the spoolie. Cause sometimes I have like hairs in there that'll get a little long and unruly. So I'm going to be using a little angled brush. Um, this is like, a storybook cosmetics brush so it's kind of shaped like a little wand and it's like heavy duty metal. I love these brushes. I don't use them a ton though and I'm going to be dipping into my Naked Smoky palette from Urban Decay. Um, this is the shade I usually use for my eyebrows when my hair is um, this really dark purple like this because this is a really dark purple and I mix it with a little bit of the brown to kind of go a little bit more natural. These shades are called Smolder and Whiskey. I really don't exaggerate my brow shape much at all. I just kind of follow how it goes naturally. Now I like to set my brows with a clear brow gel. This is just the Essence Lash and Brow Gel Mascara. It's really cheap, it works really well. And I just use a little bit of this to kind of set that color especially because I used eyeshadow as a brow product, not a proper brow product, so to speak. 
So I think that this step is really important. Okay, now that the brows are actually done, I'm gonna be going back into the eyeshadow. So for my blues, I'm going to be using this Essence water palette. Um, I think Essence is a really cheap brand, but I think it's honestly kind of underrated because they have a couple of gems within their line. I actually originally bought this palette because I wanted a palette with more blues specifically for my Jester cosplay, but you know, I'm glad I have it because uh, I didn't have a lot of blues. It's funny because this kind of blends the same way as the Morphe shadows to me, just with a little bit more fallout. <laughs> Okay, now that I've got the base colors kind of down, I'm going to be blending the transition a little bit with a kind of fluffy brush. This is definitely a task. I'm probably gonna have to add a little bit more color back in. I think this year is really great because like the pandemic kind of shut down a lot of pride celebrations, but now it's like we're really having this big movement online at the moment that's really important and Pride is kind of a part of that because I think this year we're really reiterating that like Pride is for everyone and until everyone is being included at Pride, like there, there's no point in having Pride. Like why are we having Pride for just like the white people, you know? Especially like in my area where a lot of people are conservative and like most of Utah's population is very white. Um, I think that there's a lot of exclusion going on within queer spaces and that's really a problem. And sometimes you like don't notice cause you just feel like, oh, well, most of our population is white. So of course our spaces are mostly white, but um, you don't realize sometimes the exclusion that might be going on behind the scenes, like people like not being included in things because like the organizer is racist or something. And it's just really disheartening to hear about some of these things. And I'm trying really hard to be more aware of that kind of stuff and like call it out if I see it going on and not like, you know, continue to put myself into spaces where that's being allowed, you know? Cause yeah, it doesn't affect me, but it's like, what does that say of me as a person if I'm standing by while people are getting excluded? Really, we shouldn't be being divisive within the LGBT plus community because like, we're all just really trying to, you know, have our place and find our place in this world. Let's just cut that out this year and not have that anymore. Because the fact that we even had that in the first place, where Pride was literally started by queer people of color, is just... It's astounding to me. Okay, I'm going to be grabbing uh, the shade Mogul from this palette and... Putting that kind of in the crease and hopefully this doesn't screw everything up and ruin all that work I just did. And you'll notice I'm using like a pretty small brush in the crease right now and I don't know, some people give me like weird looks for that if they like see me doing it. I don't know why, but it really just gives you more control to use a smaller brush in the crease. And then you have a little bit more control of the color and then you can go in with a fluffy brush and kind of just blend it out more. Okay, we really blended that. So, but I'm gonna still go in with a fluffier brush and kind of soften the edge a little bit. You know, I've been having like a lot of feelings recently. Um, I think everybody has, it's just kind of like, I'm feeling like really sad and angry at a lot of things, but I think that there's a silver lining to some of this stuff too, because all of the change that is going to come from the social justice movements right now, like my family moved to Utah when I was in fourth grade. I was about eight, cause I was really, I was really young. Um, and it's just that people from that same town that was so, um, conservative and not diverse and just there is so much ignorance for being perpetuated there i'm finally seeing like with this movement people genuinely start to educate themselves and try to become better people better allies not just of the black community but you know really opening their minds to okay how does this also relate to like the lgbt 
plus community, just like seeing people actually change their opinions gives me like a little bit of hope that, you know, there's still faith in humanity a little bit. And it's like in Utah, like more people are listening and that's just something I've never really seen before on a wide scale. So many people trying to genuinely change because this is such a conservative state to live in and I want to get out like mostly because of how bad the politics are here and how it's like I can't I can't be who I am um, openly without severe judgment. And it's like, I am out and I am happy with being out, but I get asked so many inappropriate questions and I've been called like horrible things on the street if I am out with a woman. And then there's like some woman who like don't wanna be around me because they feel like uncomfortable somehow with my identity. And it's just, it's very disheartening. And it shows me, it's like, we have a long way to go before like people can really be accepted for who they are. Because it's like, yeah, we might be able to get married now and things like that, but there's still a long way to go in terms of acceptance and really opening the community to everyone. And I'm just really glad to see like this pride, people really thinking about, you know, the broader scope of things and how um, like, yes, it's great that we can have a parade and have all those things. I mean, we're not this year, but thinking about like, yeah, that kind of stuff is great, but thinking really about how Pride really started. And I've seen so much going around. Like I've learned so much about Stonewall in the past like little while. I mean, I was already trying to learn a little bit before, but now it's like, I'm really trying to learn more. I just, I love learning about things. And I think that if everybody had a more open attitude about educating themselves and was excited to, you know, better themselves, I think, I think we'd be all having like such a better time right now. I'm going back in with a little bit more purple because I kind of lost that when we were <laughs> blending. All right, so now for the very inner corner, I always like to add a little bit of a highlight there. So I'm going to be using the shade two. Um, sounds weird, but it makes sense in the overall context of the palette why the shade is just named two. Um, it's a very light shimmery pink shade that will blend really nicely into that hot pink we have in the corner there. All right, so I wanna add a little pop of color underneath my eyes here. Um, I'm going to be using a little bit of Don't Know Her and also Self Made because I really wanna bring in some of this like neon pink color. So I'm gonna be adding some eyeliner. This is the Heroin Make Smooth Liquid Eyeliner. Um, this is my absolute favorite eyeliner of all time. Um, I first tried it in Japan and I've just been in love with it ever since. Um, I buy mine on Amazon. This is gonna be hard trying to keep like a steady hand in this like setup. I'm looking at myself like in the screen and realizing how silly I look. <laughs> all right, now I've just gotta even it out cause this one ended up a little bit thicker than that one. You know what? It doesn't really matter because we're going to be adding lashes. Um, what does matter is that I think I lost my eyeliner lid. All right, so now I'm going to be using the NYX retractable eyeliner in white to just brighten up my waterline a little bit. All right, I think we're good there. So now I'm going to be attempting to apply false eyelashes. Normally I do not wear lashes, especially not this big, um, but I kind of just want to elevate this look up a little bit. So these are just um, Ardell Faux Mink lashes. These have like a clear band, but for some reason, the band is kind of visible on these. So I'm gonna have to see if I can um, fix that with some mascara. Um, I'm going to be using the Urban Decay Perversion Mascara. And I'm going to use this to blend in the false lashes with my natural lashes, but also, like I said, 
um, you can see the band a little bit for some reason, which is an issue I usually don't have. So now I'm going to move on to um, face stuff. So I'm going to be starting off with some blush. I'm going to be using the Too Faced Strawberry Sparkle Highlighter Stick. So I'm just taking a little bit on a brush. See to me, it's like this just feels like a shiny blush on me. It's like I couldn't use this as a highlighter. So now for an extra bit of fun, I'm going to be using some NYX Roll-On Shimmers, which are just like little roll-on glitters. And I'm going to be um, putting these in sort of like a stripey pattern and blending them out as my highlight. I'm using another one of my Storybook Cosmetics brushes. Then we have just like our little face flags. Um, I don't know how well they read on camera, but they look really nice in the mirror. Um, they just kind of look a little bit blended at the edges, kind of a soft like flag look. So you can like paint your flag on your face, but blend it out so it looks um, a little bit like softer and not as much of a face paint type look, if that makes sense. So for the center of my face, like my nose and my cupid's bow right here, I'm going to be using this Revolution Makeup Highlighter and it's in the shade Lover's Wrath. And this is a like purplish kind of highlighter um, and it's liquid. So I'm just going to be putting like a drop of this on my nose and then blending that out. We are finally getting towards the end. Um, lastly, we're going to do lips and we're gonna see if this works. So I'm going to be doing my top lip in pink and my bottom lip in blue. These are the Sugar Pill Little Twin Stars uh, lip creams. I think that's what they call them. A, a liquid lip color. So I'm using the Lala one on my top lip, which is a nice uh, pink color. Now I'm going to be using the Kiki shade for my bottom lip, and this is where things get a little scary. So what I'm going to do to incorporate kind of the purple is I'm going to apply this uh, purple-ish lip gloss. This is um, Victoria's Secret lip gloss in the shade Major. And I'm going to be applying this kind of focusing on the center um, so I don't mess with the color that we got here too much. All right, so that means our look is pretty much done. Um, I probably should do something about this uh, hair. What are my bangs doing? Like they're parting down middle. I hate when I put my hair back in a headband and then I put my bangs back down and it like does not look the same because my hair's like, no, we don't like you to pull us back. Okay, um, I am going to go fix my hair and then come back. I hope you enjoyed seeing my makeup process. Let's remember to take a stand against discrimination and bigotry within our own community this Pride Month and continue to get educated and uplift the Black community. I remember that Black queer people really played a huge role in us being able to celebrate Pride as we do today. I'm going to be linking a couple of petitions you may or may not have seen already in the description as well as a few Black-led LGBT plus organizations you can donate to if you have the means. I know I'm a really small creator, but I wanted to link these things anyway, 
just in case you've missed them. I know there's a lot of information going around online and some things are getting pushed to the side, including a lot of like local things to me in Utah. And let's just keep lifting up the black community and standing up for injustice wherever we see it because it is a problem within the LGBT community. Racism is still a big issue, even within our, our little corner that we sometimes like forget that we have a lot of problems within our community just because people look at us from the outside and say, oh, they, they include everyone, but it's really not like that. And that's really a problem that there's people who don't feel welcome in our community. And since our whole community is a marginalized group, we shouldn't have bigotry because we all know what it's like to feel different. It's really on us non-black people to really call out our own and make sure that that stuff is really not allowed. So yeah, be sure that you check out the description and leave a like, comment, subscribe, all those things, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!